Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and the guy that won't leave Scott McNeil alone. You have been warned. This is Random Review. Hello, everyone. If we've made it this far into the uh, top-down review uh, marathon, uh, then, yeah, the power's probably still out in my area, thanks to the hurricane. So, uh, yeah. Or maybe you're seeing this later on, and it's just like a, a normal rainy day, and I just needed to post a review, and this one was uh, sitting on the back burner. Either way, uh, either way, you're watching it now, so... Uh, to uh, add to just the random toys, the more recent toys I have had lying around that I have not yet reviewed, we do have a Velocitron Blur on uh, on the desk right now. Uh, turns out, like, I, I did a quick search just to make sure, did I do the Studio Series one? And no. No, I did not. Which is weird, because I've done, like, every blur. Like, I, did, I even did G1 Blur. So, yeah, I think it's time we talk about this particular figure, and we're going to be talking the Velocitron version. First off, so much blue. So much blue. Abba dee, abba die. I'm blue. Look at it. Light blue. Standard blue. Deep blue. Oh, man, it's just, it's a lot of blue. Translucent blue. Uh, blues clues. There's a lot of blues. There's a lot of blues here. Uh, but, yeah, it's... It's a blur, so what do you expect? It's just going to be a Pantone of just a spread of blur, of blues. Uh, the vehicle mode is pretty nice. I do really actually really like uh, what they've done here. So this is based on IDW Blur. All the retooling is. Otherwise, you know, a lot of this is left over from Studio Series 86 Blur. But the rear, the the front section is completely new. We've ditched the the uh, we ditched the shield that, uh, from the front, and now it's just this weird nose cone section, this three-pronged front end. And these faux tires, painted black all the way around, it's just an illusion. They don't even come close to reaching the bottom. He's still entirely a hover car, with no, not even, like, false wheels to roll him around. So, like, you don't, like this, like this, this is just scratching up the toy in my desk. Like, that's all it's doing. I don't know why I'm still doing it in that situation, but hey, uh, he's not a toy to be rolled. Uh, but is it's an interesting detail, and it makes it look fairly cool. Like, I actually do really like the look of this particular version of Blur's vehicle mode. So if we go to the rear, we do have those thrusters in the back. They are 5 millimeters. so if you want to put blast effects like he's going that fast, you are... Uh, entirely able to do that on the back here we do have a little bit of silver painted on the top right below his big antenna this uh, section of light blue also I believe is painted yes it is translucent window in this very small detail that is in no way shape or form holding any of the real engineering that's much preferred and yeah you can see that little Autobot symbol poking through like a nice layered look to that yeah, and this one more shot at the front end before we start going into anything else. Still looking really, really nice. So, for weapon mounting, uh, Studio Series 86 doesn't focus on it nearly as much as other lines. You have these two 5mm ports in the bottom. If I you know, just need a weapon, like, really low on the vehicle, I think this is better for, like, stand mounting than it is anything else. Uh, but, for actual vehicle uh, mode... Uh, armaments, we need to do something a little bit unusual, which is this gun actually pegs sideways into the front of his nose cone, and then to make it a little bit more solid, this piece is going to go like so right here to create the full look of his vehicle mode gun, and I think this looks absolutely ridiculous. I think I really would have just preferred a hole somewhere on the top, somewhere, or like along the side, like in, in the side of his shoulders. It's a bizarre mounting for the gun. Uh, I, I can appreciate using both of the accessories together, but it's just, it sticks so far out. It just doesn't seem practical or logical. Oh, well. 
at least you're given an option. At least it's not just a standard, like, plug it into this hole. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we need to get this guy into the robot mode. All right, so let's see. What comes first? What comes first? Uh, let's see. So he's got, he's got a bunch of things tabbing in together. I'd really like to get the sides out first, if it'll let me do that. Because the sides tab in together so many places basically is what's holding the entire vehicle so get those out on these super long double hinge pieces from there I'm gonna go ahead and separate the rear section so I can start getting that unfolded out uh, let's see those out of the way I can fold these parts up and that should give me enough room to get these legs out if I fold everything up like so. Yep, there we go. Clip those out. Folding the legs down like so. And then let's see, snap this one in like, like that. Nice loud click. Fold the antenna down inside that leg. Clip that all together and then fold the feet down like so to get back up to the torso we're gonna go ahead and rotate the windshield all the way around rotate these arms there you go uh, no, no make sure uh, make sure this hinge is done up like that then rotate the arms okay clip those into these uh, dark blue sections all right so these big front ends that become those massive spikes on the front of the vehicles. Yeah, we need to uh, we need to rotate those around so we can uh, get those folded to the undersides of his arms. There we these like so. I realize I'm very bad at showing that on camera, so that's how that goes. Make sure it's all formed in as tightly as you can. It's supposed to clip in here, but like on mine, like it doesn't like doesn't really like to clip, uh, partially because of the way that uh, wrist is like, partially because the wrist rotation is like tied to it, so it doesn't really like to align correctly. All right, but with that done, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this back, double hinge it back. It's going to uh, click into the back like so, and that is going to give you your IDW style Velocitron Blur. Uh, not a bad transformation. Uh, it's pretty typical of transformations these days, especially the way the legs work and like f basically shells that fold around and then come together to create the lower legs. Uh, and uh, the arm transformations, uh, there's actually quite a bit to getting that torso transforms and like I appreciate uh, that level of intricacy without becoming over complicated. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's a fun little transformation. Uh, as we can see here, uh, still tons more shades of blue going on. Proportionally, maybe a little bit heavy in the arms. Of course, if you look at some of the blurs in the past, like even, like even the G1 blur especially, yeah, he uh, big arms does seem to be just a thing for him. So I'm not really uh, discrediting that in any way it's I don't know just kind of one of his traits what I like is that there's not much backpack to him this all clips together very nicely and fills in the back what I don't like is these massive pieces that hang off the lower sides of his arms that just feels uh, it just feels messy and it just feels like that's going to get in the way of things um, it, the, the studio yeah, the, the studio series version did the same thing uh, I'm, I'm not much of a fan of it there uh, either, but you know, uh, I guess it's just what we're stuck with. I th it is part it is a traditional part of his transformation, but like I definitely feel like they could have maybe done something a little bit nicer than that. I don't know, just my opinion. I'm not an engineer, so maybe it's the best they could do. All right, but let's take a look at the head because that's the important part here. So. Uh, there are a lot of different details on here that do not exist on the 86 version, the front of the arms especially, but it's all about that head, that little bit of smirk that he's got. 
Uh, the head was the point of criticism with Studio Series 86 Blur. It just looks weird. Like, there's just something off to it that doesn't look quite right. Uh, this, this, I mean, obviously it's not G1 Blur, but it is a far nicer head sculpt if you're going for the IDW version. Like, it does look spot on to uh, what I expect that blur to look like. So, hey, I mean, it's not the original blur, but it is a blur head that does look correct. So I will give it, I will give it credit. You know, whereas it's mostly a G1 body, uh, the new elements are done fairly nicely. And, you know, not bad at all. So in the robot mode, yeah, I, what I really like here is how the blue is distributed. You've got the light blue breaking up in the right spots. This like brighter blue is the dominant color going through with a darker blue breaking it up at just the right times. It's very clean, very even looking distribution of his various color. Really, really like it. Feels nice too uh, for, you know, considering it's the second run of the mold. Everything does feel pretty good. I always worry like when the about the knees on modern figures because of the way like things clip around or clip into them. But everything seems to do pretty well here. Not really getting any kind of weirdness out of it. So, good on Hasbro. Good on Takara. Feels nice. Feels nice. All right. Head, full rotation. A little bit of ball joint action. Left, you know, back and forth. Nice. Nice range in the universal shoulder. It's a bit of a detent to the shoulder. So, like, it has a, a limit to some of the more fine positions it can be in but it's at least nice and sturdy with the way it feels. Elbow, 90 degree, 360 degree uh, uh, bicep swivel. The wrist can rotate, but it does mean that this big hunk of plastic has to go with it, so maybe just best to leave it. Waist, 360 degrees, easy. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, universal hinges there at the hips. All that works really, really well. 90 degree knee. And then the ankle tilt works really nicely. Lots of posability with this blur, which you come to expect. He's got pretty much the standard level of articulation that deluxes get these days because they get a ton more than they used to. And it's all pretty much standard now. You know, you know, it's really just like something of the transformation that goes awry that requires them to limit the amount of articulation in a figure these days. But this comes together pretty nicely. So accessory wise, we did see that this uh, is his actual rifle. We can go ahead and uh, plug that in just fine. So not a bad looking weapon. It's the other one that's a little bit weirder. So it's the repair torch, which I can't even remember when Blur used it, but he does have it. It slides all the way around his fist to make it look like it's part of him. You know, just and uh, kind of emerging out of his forearm, uh, so that's pretty typical. Um, yeah, that's like I'm just, I kind of wish for a second gun. Like this is just so weird. Someone did figure out something interesting though. So if we go to the rear on him and we pull the back off and we'll double hinge it out, this piece, which I'm not a fan of, I don't like keeping it in his hand because I like to actually see his open hand. This piece actually fits perfectly inside there, complete with a groove that actually does allow for the nozzle. The downside is it does not fold, it does not like lock this in anymore. It's tight enough to hold its place and hold it there. So if you really need to store it and you have your blur on display and you don't want that left hand covered up, you can go ahead and do that. It'll hold on to that weapon, keep it with blur, but it won't interfere with the look of him when he is in your display shelf. A little bit of a blur hack for you, uh, just to finish this review off. So yeah, overall, like he has the same, he has like one of the major issues from Studio Series Blur, and that being those gigantic things hanging off of his lower arms. Uh, but I do like the sculpting improvements, and yes, while it is not the G1 head, it is a very, very nice head sculpt that actually hits the mark that it's going for, unlike the head on the original attempt of this blur. And yes, I think the vehicle mode is just more interesting than the uh, traditional hover car mode. 
So it's not a bad blur to pick up, uh, especially if you miss. Well, I don't know how you could have missed out on it. It was all over the place for so long. But yeah, if you feel like picking up an all blue space car, hover car with fake wheels, etc. Yeah, you can't do wrong on this one. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.